Let's uh, get you uh, an opinion from uh, a special guest joining in on the show this evening uh, in our special segment, 100 Day Agenda. We're joined by G.K. Pillay, former Home Secretary and former Chairman of MCX Stock Exchange, as well as got uh, a varied bureaucratic experience uh, over the years. Mr. Pillay, thank you so much for speaking to us here at ET Now. Uh, uh, firstly, uh, tell us, uh, what kind of a role do you expect the new government to play as far as bureaucrats are concerned? I think the bureaucrat would really look for a very clear enunciation of policies. Uh, if very clear directions are given of what is expected of them, uh, I think uh, bureaucrats then uh, you have to you gi you give them the little bit of leeway and uh, flexibility to carry out that policy. Uh, they are quite capable of doing that. Mr. Pillai, UPA2 has been marred with a whole host of institutional activism that's really come to the fore. How would you expect the new government to really deal with this new age phenomena, institutions being very, very active? Well, I think uh, uh, to an extent there has been a, a little bit of uh, activism. But I think uh, if a very clear policy direction is there, uh, one, the bureaucracy responds. Uh, you, you, you are really expecting them to carry out the policy which is there in writing and not something which is oral. And therefore, I think uh, more and more, uh, once that is made clear, uh, the, the bureaucrats find it much more easy to uh, work in. The other aspect, I think, is equally important, I think, uh, to instill confidence is that the new government would have to initiate a process of dialogue uh, with certain institutions like the CAG, the CBI, and so on, uh, to certain, what I would call, lay down certain ground rules of uh, what can be looked into and what cannot be looked into, so that uh, the bureaucrats feel a little bit more comfortable in terms of uh, what uh, they can express on the file and what they can actually do without having to worry that all their decisions are going to be questioned. That's the point, isn't it, Mr. Pillai? You know, bureaucrats are being dragged to court for decisions, uh, you know, 10 to 15 years after those decisions were taken. What assurance do you think can the new government give uh, bureaucrats uh, which will then ensure swift decision making? Because everyone believes there's been a policy paralysis. See, I think the real, the real problem is not with, for, for an honest bureaucrat, the real problem is uh, uh, he is willing to be questioned, he is willing to, you know, explain what happened. But the costs or the legal costs of fighting something, you know, 10 years or 15 years post-retirement are quite expensive. And therefore, I think what government needs to do is to tell or to have a scheme whereby the bureaucrat can uh, at the, at, be able to hire good lawyers and the government should reimburse, reimburse those, uh, uh, the, the legal fees so that the uh, bureaucrats don't face uh, financial hardships because uh, legal fees are extremely expensive. And I know of at least uh, one case of a bureaucrat who is literally having to sell some, some of his uh, properties to be able to pay the lawyer's fees, uh, which then drags on for years, as you know, in India. Mr. Pillai, a very pertinent question emerges from the role of the PMO. It has almost been reduced to absolute ridicule in UPA2. What sort of a role would you want the new PMO to play, considering it's really the nerve center for any administrative action in any sort of government, really? See, the Prime Minister's office will finally uh, reflect uh, the uh, philosophy and the lifestyle or the style of the Prime Minister himself. And therefore, uh, that is going to be very critical in terms of uh, the, when the new government comes, uh, who is the prime minister and what his style would be. Because uh, it's very important for the prime minister to, shall I say, uh, uh, get people into the PMO, people of, uh, shall I say, of, outs of uh, proven integrity, people who have a good track record, because the rest of the bureaucracy then f follows. They know that uh, you have people with uh, outstanding track record there. They are following the directions given by the Prime Minister. And then uh, you will find that everybody works as a team. Because uh, in a, uh, shall I say, a, a coalition type government or where different uh, interests are at play, uh, you will need to have a clear central authority, the team because uh, to account, but then take a decision uh, based on their best judgment.
All right, I'm going to take you back in your stint as the Home Secretary of this government. Uh, India has battled with internal security for a very long time now, including red terror, and we've seen many instances of red terror really rail this ugly, ugly head. What kind of a focus would you want uh, on this particular thing from the new government? You have to pay. I think it's, it's a basic duty of every government. Uh, the basic duty is really to preserve law and order and provide security to its citizens. So if you fail in law and order and providing security, uh, then the, re the rest, everything else collapses. Because you can't have economic growth in a situation where the law and order situation has broken down. And that, I think, is where I think basic policing, uh, the implementation of police reforms uh, as it was enunciated in the Police Commission report and uh, the Supreme Court judgments in the Prakash Singh case, uh, that really needs top priority by the government. Apart from, of course, the criminal justice system and the judicial reforms, these are areas where uh, government will have to focus to make sure that uh, cases are taken up, tried and completed within a year, maximum two years, so that you don't allow things to drag on for years and people feel that uh, uh, we are not getting justice. I think that is very important, the feeling that if you commit a crime, you will have to pay. I think that has to really uh, percolate down to the lowest levels. Mr. Pillai, thanks for joining in now with that perspective right here on the 100-day agenda. We've been speaking to a lot of CEOs and economists. Uh, let's, uh, we thought let's get your opinion from uh, an important bureaucrat as well on what the government needs to do to fix uh, the uh, administrative deadlock, so to say.